Today I'm going to show you how to make beer look amazing in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And we got a really cool tutorial today because it's all about beer and more specifically my favorite beer, Guinness. We're going to take an image that was submitted to us by a contest winner. This is Jimmy's image and he did a great job photographing this Guinness and we're going to make it look totally badass in Photoshop. We got a lot to do. This is going to be a two-part episode. We're going to show you guys how to cut the beer out from its background. We're going to add highlights to the beer. I'm going to show you how to make a custom brush that's going to create all the little bubbles and things like that. That's going to make it look really real. We're going to put a reflection and a really cool background on it as well. So a big two-part episode. Let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot to do today. So our image today is really nice. We can see the uh, Guinness logo is well defined. We can see the head and everything. But the glass is lacking quite a bit of detail. I can't really see what's going on here. It kind of just fades into black and um, it's kind of missing that epic Guinness head that we like to see on our beer. So we're going to add all that basically from scratch in Photoshop. Now to give it a start, I want to cut our beer out from the background and we're going to do this for a couple of reasons. It's actually going to help when we create our highlights as well. So I need to kind of see my beer a little bit better. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer and go up to curves and just click here and drag this way up so I can actually see what's going on. Now we can see this image is, it was just a JPEG submitted to our website, uh, to our contest. So you can see that, you know, when you, when you bring that way up, you'll get some artifacts and things like that. It's not a huge deal because we're, we're going to wind up making this invisible. I just kind of want to see the outlines of our glass. So we're going to start off with this using the pen tool and the pen tool is going to help us get cut out from our background as well as define the area where the head is going to be. And then we're going to be able to use the same selections from the pen tool to actually make the highlights in the glass. Really, really cool. So let's hit P for the pen tool. And basically I want to try to figure out about where the center of our glass is. If I miss this a little bit, it's not that big of a deal, but we're just going to click right about there and say, yeah, that's about the center of our glass. <laughs> You'll be able to see, we'll be able to change this later. Okay, next I'm gonna bring this out to about here, and there we go. That's gonna define the head of the glass, you know, where, the, where you pour over and it's a little bit of the uh, foam and stuff on there on the top. Okay, there we go. Now let's hold Alt or Option. I'm gonna click this right around there and we'll get the lip of the glass. There we are. And what I'm going to do, I'm only going to cut out one side of this Guinness because we're actually going to wind up mirroring it. All right, so let's bring this up here. This will make it a lot easier and it'll make it symmetrical as well. There we go. Click down here. Now, if, you're, if you photograph beer or something like that and it's already really well defined from the background, you won't need to do this. This is just helping when it comes to actually like defining it, making it, you know, so you can actually see what's going on different from the background. All right, let's create another point right there and kind of bring it in right there we go. All right, and we really want to nail this shape of the Guinness glass because it's kind of a really identifiable shape. Okay. There we go, and that looks pretty good. So we've gone over and we've actually done this to the right side of this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over paths here and I'm just gonna double click on this and I'm gonna call it Guinness One. Okay, so now that we've defined that side of the path, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a selection so we can command click to turn that into a selection. Okay, on our layers, we're gonna create a new layer and you can just fill this in whatever color. I'm gonna hit option delete, fill with my foreground color, which in this case is blue. All right. So basically we made a selection and I filled it with a color. Now I'm going to duplicate this. So hit Command J, then Command T, and go to Flip Horizontal. So I'm going to flip this horizontally. There we are. And hit Enter. And let's just lower our opacity so we can get this right about where we need to. All right. That looks really good there. And we'll just bring our opacity back up to 100. So you can see the glass is perfectly mirrored because I only cut out one side and then I just mirrored it onto the other side. And this, these couple of layers I can use to make selections. All right, this is the most tedious part of the tutorial, I promise. 
Okay, now here on the bottom, I didn't come to exact center. It's not a huge deal. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my pen tool. I'm gonna start, just click right about there and then click right over here and then holding control or command, you can just kind of bring this point down. There we go. And that's just going to allow me to get a nice clean line that exists right in the same space as those two. Come around here, right click and go to make selection we're going to hit OK, and then on this layer, I'm going to hit Option, Delete, and that's going to fill that with my foreground color. So what we should see now is basically, let's, let's make everything invisible, we should see the shape of a Guinness glass. It's made of a couple different layers right now, but what we're going to do is hit Shift, click on those two layers, and hit Command E to merge them together. So what started out with just a pen path is now a shape that defines our Guinness glass. That's really important. Okay. So this shape, we can use this in a number of ways, and we're going to do that. I'm going to get rid of this curves adjustment layer because we don't need it anymore. So this shape, we can use to cut out my actual Guinness glass. How do we do that? All we have to do is hold down Control and Command and click on the shape here, and then I'm going to click on my background layer and put a layer mask on it. Okay, it converted that from a background layer to a regular layer, put the layer mask on it, and here you can see there's our Guinness, and it is perfectly cut out from the background. Okay, now we don't have a background. We actually want our background to be black. So what we're going to do, I'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer. We're going to go all the way down here to black, and I'm just going to move this below. Okay, now you're probably thinking that was a lot of work, and it looks the exact same as it did before. And you're right, it does look the exact same as it does, did before, but we have a couple options now. Check this out. If I were to grab my brush tool and I wanted to paint behind my Guinness, I can totally do that, which we're going to be doing in part two of the tutorial. Not only that, but I have a perfect selection around my glass, which is going to allow me to do some great things like create the head of the glass, as well as create the reflections on the side of the glass. Okay, all really good things, as well as I can crop this image and change it and things like that as well. Okay, so now that we have our glass in place and everything looks good, we're going to get started creating the highlights. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. We're going to create the highlights that are on the sides of the glass. This is going to be really cool. So we've got three main highlights I want to add to this glass. The first is going to be here on the left hand side. And how we're going to do this, I'm going to use this layer to actually define that. So I'm going to hold command and click on this layer. So there we go. We've got a new selection and it's right around again our Guinness glass, right? On a new layer, right here. So we're going to continue to use this blue layer just to make selections over and over again. I'm not actually going to do anything with the layer, just use it to make selections. Okay, on this layer now, I'm going to grab my brush tool, B for the brush tool, and then we're going to choose a nice light color here that's in the glass and hold Alt or Option Delete. Okay, looking good. Now, I'm going to go back to a selection tool, so we're going to go to our marquee tool. I'm going to right click and say Transform Selection, and we're going to move this to the right a bit. There we go, that looks pretty good hit enter, and then I'm going to hit delete again. Okay, then deselect by hitting command D. So what we've got now is basically a nice highlight here on the left side of the glass. Let's do that again for the middle of the glass, and then we're going to do that again for the right side of the glass. So let's make this invisible. Again, we're going to try this again so you guys can get a good feel of this. We're going to hold command and click on this bottle again, or sorry, the glass, okay? On a new layer, I'm going to hit option, alt or option, delete, which is going to fill with that same color. Now we're going to right click on this and go to transform selection. And this time we're going to bring it over even farther. This will be like a thicker um, highlight. All right, let's hit enter and then hit delete there. Okay, so we've got one of them is going to be relatively thick. One of them is going to be thin. Now let's go one from the other side. So we're going to command click on this again, create a new layer. Okay. Now on this new layer, we're going to hold Alt or Option Delete. Using your marquee selection tool, just right click and say Transform Selection. Bring this over to the left a little bit. We'll make this a little bit thicker. Hit Enter and then hit Delete. Okay, so now what you can see is we've got a couple different highlights for our glass. They're not perfect, but the shape is right. And the reason why I wanted to do this using the shape of our glass is you don't want to just draw a straight highlight. Like if a glass curves out like that, it's actually going to have the same type of highlight. Like the highlight's going to follow the curvature of the glass. So you can't just create a straight highlight and expect it to look real because it won't look real. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this highlight that's right over here and I'm going to bring it over to the left just a bit. 
So we're just going to use our Move tool to bring it to the left. We're going to take this highlight, and I'm going to move it right over here to about the center. OK, and then this highlight's going to stay there on the left side. OK, so we've got our three different highlights ready to go. Now we're going to shift click the three of those layers and go to Screen Blending Mode, which is going to brighten up. And you can see it's going to allow us to actually get our, um, it's going to go over top of whatever is below it. So you can see it's, it's actually going to look like a highlight. OK, now if that color is too extreme, ex extreme if that color is too extreme for you, I, it's a little bit too, I can see too much color in here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Command U, and we're just going to bring the saturation down on that just a bit, negative 36. So let's do the same thing with these two. All right. You do want some of the color from the glass. That's just going to help it make, look, uh, make it look a little bit real, more real. But in this case, it was a little bit too much color. All right. There we go. So we've got each of our three um, selections made now. Let's go ahead and focus on the left selection. Now, the other cool thing we're going to do is I'm going to use a clipping mask to make sure that these selections, these highlights, are only visible on the glass. And what that means is if I use my move tool right now and just move it around, you can see it's just going to be visible everywhere, right? Now, if I right click and go to create clipping mask and make this visible only where the glass is, if I move it off of the glass, Check that out. It's still only visible where my Guinness glass is. In fact, I can make the background invisible so you can see it's only visible where that Guinness glass is. Let's lower our opacity a little bit so we can actually see what we're doing here. There we go. That helps us see what we're doing a little bit better. OK, now I'm going to give this a blur, but I'm not worried about it blurring off the left side of the glass. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and then to Gaussian Blur. And then that's going to give it a nice blur there very cool. So that's giving it a nice blur on this side of the glass. Now we can bring that up and it's like, oh, we just defined the left side of the glass. Really cool. Let's go ahead and give this layer a blur as well. This one's going to get slightly less of a blur. All right, there we go. And then this layer, <coughs> excuse me, since it's toward the center of the glass, what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Command T and we're actually going to shrink this down a little bit because we don't want it to be there we go. We don't want it to have so much curvature because it's going to be towards the center of the glass. So anything that's here in the center is going to have less of a curvature. Like directly in the front, it's actually going to be a relatively straight line, and then they're going to curve around more and more as they get to the sides. OK, so that's going to get a nice blur to it as well. All right, looking good. That gets the nice blur. And then these two as well, Option Command G, we're going to clip those to our layer. OK. So we've got our highlights. They're working pretty well now, and they're looking, they're looking like they should. We still have to adjust like opacity and you know, things like that to actually make them look real, but they're, actually, they're starting to look good. And if you were a person who didn't really care about details, you would probably say, oh, it looks done. But I'm not one of those people. All right, we are going to lower down the opacity on these layers just a little bit to help make these look a little bit more real. All right. Very nice. And you can see that does look nice and real, um, especially because it follows. We're going to put a layer mask on each of these, by the way. It follows the shape of the glass. And again, that's why it's such a big deal. And that's why creating the beautiful. That's why creating the selections of the glass was so important, because now I don't have to try to recreate these highlights every single time. I'm just making sure that they look they follow the original selection of our glass. And here what I'm doing is I'm just like just barely fading them out here on the bottom. There we go. Giving them a little bit of fade, which is going to help them look more real. All right. And I'm just doing this with a layer mask, so nothing super special here. OK, now we want them to be invisible where the head is, so we're going to click that and make sure on all the layer masks, we're going to click that invisible where the head is. OK, so we started off basically with something that looks just like this, and we're already here. We got a lot, a lot of really cool stuff to go, and we're nowhere near done. So the next thing I want to do in this episode is we're going to create the head of the glass. And you're like, gosh, that looks really hard, because we basically have to do it completely from scratch. But what we've done is we've already defined the shape of it. So what we're going to do, beneath these three highlight layers, okay, we're going to create a new layer under those. And remember, 
we've used this, if I hold Alt or Option, you can see, we've already created the shape of the head in the selection for this Guinness. So as long as I have these layers clipped to the, this layer, I can paint up here, and you're gonna see it's actually gonna paint in the head, which is really, really cool. Okay, so the trick for this is just to sample the colors here in the actual glass. Okay, sample those colors and just paint, basically just go straight up with this. All right, and that's gonna help it make it look like you actually got a bit of a gradient going on and there we go. All right, because we want the head to be dynamic. We don't want it to just look like one, you know, flat white blob. That's, that's no good. Flat white blobs don't work. Okay, now we're gonna create some of this foam on the top here. And again, I'm just using the brush tool here. Good old brush tool. My favorite tool in Photoshop. Everyone's like, what? You just do that with the brush tool? How do, why do you get to do that? I have to use all these complicated tools. And you don't. The brush tool will do the majority of just about whatever you need to do in Photoshop. Um, don't let anyone tell you different because it's not true. All right, very nice. And I just created all that head up there with the brush tool. Let's just grab our eraser tool and I'm gonna erase it away where it, I kind of painted over just a little bit. There we go. And that's looking good. We're already looking great, guys. Next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna create a hue, hue saturation adjustment layer and we're gonna bring our saturation quite a bit lower. Okay, let's hit Command I on this layer mask because I want our, there we go, I want this to be visible where the head is, right? I wanna take down the saturation of the, there we go, of the color here. It was a little bit too yellow and the traditional Guinness ads definitely have this a little bit more um, on the gray scale. They don't, the head does not look yellow. So I just wanna make sure we're, we're fitting to that. All right, there we go, and we are looking great. So let's get that visible. Now, the next thing we need to do, and I know that it doesn't look that real right now, it just basically looks like an illustration. So we don't have any detail from the glass. So what we need to do is we need to be able to duplicate some detail from the glass and put that over top of the head, especially here where we have the rim. So we're gonna make this invisible, there we go. What I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna hit Command J on this layer. So the background layer with the Guinness, I'm gonna hit Command J, which duplicates that, and we're gonna hit Option Command G, okay? So now we can see, like if I were to move this around, we'd have another version of our glass inside of this glass. Okay, I know this gets a little complex, but we do have to duplicate highlights and things like that. What we're trying to do is not that simple, but I promise you this is like the simplest way I can explain this. Okay, so we've got our head, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring this layer that includes the glass back over top of the head. So if I move it around, you can see basically it just looks like this, okay? Now we're gonna change these layer blend modes from normal down to things like soft light. And when I change it to soft light, we can see, let's just hit Command U to lower the saturation on that as well. There we go. We can see it actually brings information from our glass over top of our layer. Let's try something like screen and see how that works. All right, screen looks great. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna use this layer, I'm gonna just paint black on the layer mask there, and I'm gonna paint white here on our layer mask up here. There we go, we're gonna bring in some of that detail there. Really, really nice and simple. Even some of this existing highlight that was there. All right, beautiful. Now, we're gonna hit Command J on this again. We're gonna clip that. We're always clipping everything down to our original layer mask, okay? And then we're gonna change this down to soft light. So this layer is gonna get a soft light layer, but we're going to, again, I'm gonna just make sure I paint this just beneath the rim of the glass here. All right, because we don't want this visible where the foam is necessarily, right? We just want this visible right here to kind of define the bottom edge of our pint glass. 
OK, so you can see that just helps define the edge of the glass just a bit better. All right, and we're looking great. Let's go ahead and just bring this. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more just so we can have a little bit more of an easy transition there. OK, cool. All right, guys, and that's the end of part one. Let's take a look at the before and after. I'm just going to turn all these layers off so we can see that's the before. And there we go. That is the after. Now, we're only halfway done. And you know, artists don't like to show anyone what things look like halfway done. So I know this is not professional just yet, but by the end of our next episode, it's going to look amazing. We're going to add all the little bubbles that's going to make it real. We're going to add condensation to the outside of the glass. We're going to put a reflection on the bottom of the glass as well as put like a glow behind it. It's just going to, it's going to make it look like an amazing beer ad completely finished in part two. So be sure to stick around for that. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you appreciated this episode. And if you have any ideas for other episodes, please leave them in a comment right down below. That's how we get our ideas for these episodes. And if this was a little bit too complicated, be sure to check out our pro Photoshop tutorial, Photoshop 101. It's guaranteed to help you guys get ready and into Photoshop learning the complete program. It's over three and a half hours long that teaches you every single tool you need to know so you can start creating amazing things right away. And if you have anyone in your life who's interested in Photoshop and photography, hit that share button and share it with them now. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in next episode Part two. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, just you, you'll know when it comes. I'll see you in next episode, part two. <laughs> Speak on camera is hard, me thinks sometimes. <laughs>